Hey Savers, it's Christina, the Executive Director of More For More. I'm so excited to bring you this young lady. Oh my gosh, she is a special guest because not only is she going to be an amazing speaker, but she is a sister in the Greekdom life. Um, she is an author, she is a mother, she is like absolutely amazing. Um, I'm so happy that I actually found her um, through LinkedIn. So networking is very important. But this young lady coming to you is going to tell you an amazing story about who she is and what she does and why it's important. So I cannot wait to bring this coach, this mentor, this leader to you guys. Here we go. Miss Char C. Smith. Yay! Thank you so much, Christina. I'm so excited to be here with you all today. Yay! Oh my gosh, you wonderful boss woman, queen. I'm so I'm so glad that you've taken the time out with us to be able to tell us your story. Um, but before we get started, I know you a little bit because I know we've had some conversations, but please tell our audience a little bit about who you are, not about your brand, not about your business, but who are you? As Sharcy I am an ambitious mom of two young children. Mm -hmm. I have a six-year-old son and a four-year-old daughter. Mm -hmm. I'm a wife, a daughter, sister, friend. I'm a sewer of V Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. I am a member of the National Coalition of 100 Black Women, and I am of service. I'm a, a servant leader, an authentic leader, a student of leadership. I'm actually working on my doctoral degree as we speak, which is an EDD in Organizational Change and Leadership. So I am a lifelong learner, and I am so engaged civically in my community and I just want to be of service in all things. I'm a coach, I'm a mentor, mm -hmm. I'm a supporter, I'm a philanthropic giver. Um, so all the things you said, that truly <laughs> is who I am and that, that's the essence of who I am. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my gosh, it's so amazing because being a part of organizations, sorority organizations, I'm a Zeta, uh, as you know, but, you know, being part of these organizations, we already do community service. We already do sisterhood uh, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, a plethora of other things, but it's just amazing how you've taken that and enhanced who you are, enhanced, you know, your networking um, opportunities and, and to, to reach and teach other young women, other young men um, to be great and amazing in their lives. So I'm so happy to hear that you're out there. Laugh the hand, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I want to know, with that being said, like, tell us about your business. Tell us about the DIS training that you do. Um, mm -hmm. tell, us about, tell us about Empower You Consulting. Absolutely. So I started Empower You Consulting in March of 2019. It was International Women's Day and I was empowered to start my own business. Um, a little bit about me is um, I've worked in legal for a long time. I have over 15 years of leadership experience in legal. Um, but prior to getting into legal, I got my master's degree in adult education, training and development. So I've always been passionate about delivering training and educating adult learners, which is very, very different than just, you know, educating uh, children as they're learning. So I, I really studied it and I said, you know what, now is the time. Um, I love speaking. I'm a public speaker. I love facilitating training and really helping people to develop. And so I started Empower You Consulting. I was working at a corporate job and I was seeing the consultants come in and they were all older white women, older white men. No one looked like we do. Yeah. And I said, you know what? I see what they're doing. I have a skill set that is equal, if not greater than the skill set that they are bringing into this workplace. And I can do this. And I was empowered. And I said, I'm starting my own consulting business. I'm going to go into these corporations where when young, ambitious black women like myself, um, they can see someone who looks like them as they are trying to advance in their careers. And so that is how that consulting piece got started. Um, but I also have a coaching component mm -hmm. where I, again, being a first generation college graduate, 
first generation corporate America worker because mm -hmm. my family were blue collar workers. I'm mm -hmm. the first one in leadership in corporate America. I'm also the first woman entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So I knew what it was like to pave my own path in order to advance in my career. And I wanted to be able to help other women who were just like me to be able to fast track and really move up the rungs of the corporate ladder. And so I started that coaching component. And I remember how I felt when I got my very first client. Um, she found me on Instagram. She was a PhD student living in Louisiana at the time. And she said, you know what? I'm looking to take my career to the next level. I've watched you do it. I know what you're capable of and I'm ready to do the work. And so that is how I got my very first coaching client. Um, and to this day, I I'm known as a, a working mom's coach and a women's leadership coach. That is my passion and, and that is what I do. I specifically chose working moms because as a working mom, that's just an added layer of adversity. We already have adversity being a woman, a woman, a black woman, another la layer, and then being a mom, that's just another layer. And so I said, if I could really focus specifically on helping my working moms to advance, oh, well then everybody else is gonna advance obviously you know under that because there's less layers of adversity um so i like the challenge and that is what i'm able to do i've helped women with their resumes i've helped women um, prepare for interviews i've helped women negotiate contracts i also have that skill set um, where i'm able to help other working moms and women who want to start a side business i'm able to help them do that too because i started my own while i was working a car corporate job so I have all these different skill sets that I'm able to really pour into everyone who I work with um, on a coaching level. And then from the consulting piece back to that, going in the organization, I'm really there to help them build out training programs that are inclusive of black women and black people. So everything I do has the diversity, equity and inclusion lens. Mm -hmm. um, and just recently, I became an authorized partner to facilitate DISC trainings. And so I can facilitate the DISC assessments. And then I really come in and help teams with their team building and putting the pieces together to make sure they have the right players in the right positions. So that is another aspect of the business that I built. And I'm so proud of the business yeah. because not only do I run it um, full time, I also still work in corporate full time. Mm. So my business to me is not a side hustle. It's considered a full time business and I have help with my business as well. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. I know this is probably like a little too soon, but let me ask you this. How do you truly balance all of those hats as a woman, as a business owner, as a sorority sister, as a leader, as a coach, as a mom, as a wife, how do you truly balance yourself with all of those hats? You know what, honestly, balance for me does not exist. It's a non-existence. Um, I call it work-life prioritization. Okay. I have to prioritize what is most important in that moment. So when I may not be the best business owner at the exact same time that I'm the best mom. Mm. I'm not the best wife at the exact same time that I'm the best CEO. So whatever is my priority at that moment is really what I'm giving 100% to in that moment. So that does not equal balance. It just equals prioritizing the things that are important in that moment. And for me, also, I have the flexibility so I'm blessed to have a flexible role where I can take a coaching client in the middle of my work day when I'm still work on the clock with my corporate job because I'm salary. And my company has that understanding that I do have my own things outside of here. So I have that flexibility. It's a blessing that I do not take for granted. It's a blessing that I know so many other are not fortunate to have. But you have to make it work with what you do have. And so for me, that's what works. Sorority. I am the risk risk management chairman uh, for my chapter. I'm also the leadership development a program creator. I created a whole program wrapped around leadership development. And so with those things, yes, they're very time consuming, but I have designated time for those things. Yeah. You know, it's the balance. Again, the balance doesn't exist, but the prioritizing does. 
And when you're really, really good at time management the way that I am, you're able to accomplish your goal for every single thing. Um, and it just fits. It's like putting a puzzle piece together. You're trying to figure out what to do, right? I'm a huge um, advocate for personal and professional development. I don't have time to listen to podcasts during the day when I'm doing a million other things. But guess what? When I'm in that shower, I'm listening to my podcast. When I'm in that car, I'm listening to that audio book. So I get what I need for me, but I put it in where I can fit it in. And that's just what works for me. That's amazing. Because I know with us all going day to day trying to figure out, okay, oh my gosh, I'm so busy. I can't do it. But we find a way to do it, but we're overwhelmed at the end of the day. And then we also find ourselves thinking like we haven't done enough. And that, mm -hmm. that, that imposter syndrome kind of jumps in. And I know you're the guru on imposter syndrome, but tell us a little bit about what inspired you, you know, to really teach and encourage about imposter syndrome and what encourages you each and every day um, to do what you do. So for me, I chose imposter syndrome to really do a deep dive into in my studying because as someone like me who inspires others, motivates others and empowers them to really step up and lead and advance in their lives, all aspects of their lives and their careers. I wanted to say, well, what is one thing that could actually stop you from achieving more? What is one thing that's holding you back, that's making you play small and not take the risk in order to get to that next level? And it was always imposter syndrome. And so I decided I'm going to speak about this because I'm going to give you the tips and the tools to overcome it so that you can achieve your goals. So me, do I still battle with it? Yes, absolutely. So does, so does Michelle Obama. So did Maya Angelou after she wrote 11 books. It's not something that goes away. But once you have the tips and the tools and resources to be able to strengthen that muscle, which is your mind, you know, you have to practice practice that with the affirmations you have to practice speaking life into yourself mm -hmm. and once you're able to really get in control of that you hear that saboteur inner critic telling you you don't deserve something or, or you're not fit to be in that room you can shut it down you can say i hear you negative inner critic but you're not gonna stop me you're telling me i don't belong here guess what yes i do i deserve everything i've already earned and i deserve even more than that and I'm gonna get it. So that is why I chose to talk about imposter syndrome. Wow, oh my gosh. The conference, they don't understand <laughs> how amazing it's gonna be because with you talking about that mental portion of our four cores of wealth, it like, uh, like I'm one of those ones that still has imposter syndrome, even with that, my organization, my various businesses. And it's just like, sometimes you need to be reminded, like you are doing amazing things. It's just mm -hmm. what you have on your list. You're not, might not be checking off, but you're doing other things in the process. So <laughs> <laughs> what inspires you to keep waking up every morning, doing what you do? Like, who is your hero? Who's your hero? Who is that family member or mentor that keeps you going each and every day with what you're doing? You know, for me, it's my mother and my mother, you know, she she didn't really get a chance to do everything in her life. She's still alive, but there are things and goals that she didn't get to accomplish. And so it's my job to get up every day and make sure that I'm helping other people accomplish those things so that they don't have to live with that regret. Sometimes I see it in my mom and I'm like, mom, you know, you only had nine more credit hours. You could have got through this. So if my mother had me in her life, a coach, somebody there to mentor her, coach her through it, she would have accomplished those things. So every day I get up, even leading my team in corporate America, because I lead a team of all women. You know, it's my duty to show them you are capable of doing great things. Everything that you've already earned to get you here, you deserve those things. You are worthy of those things. So even if they don't hear from anybody else, they're going to hear from me. My coaching clients, if they don't hear from anybody else, they're going to hear from me. So that is 
That is why I get up every day. I am inspired to do the great work, to see people achieve things that they don't even know they're capable of achieving, to remind them of their greatness and their excellence. I get up every day for my own daughter. I have a four-year-old daughter. I want her to see a great example in me, her mom. She sees me, mom, you work a lot. You, you're doing the, yes, but guess what? I can close this computer and I could just give you 100% of my focus and be the best mom for you. Just like I'm the best coach for my clients and everybody else. So it really, truly, you know, it, it just goes back to my mom. It, yeah. it really does. Goes back to the root. And I'm glad that you're taking the time out to break generational curses and, you know, doing something different and seeing that if somebody else in the past or in our ancestors would have had the opportunity that you now have, you know, you're becoming a part of the the change. You're becoming part of the solution um, instead of continuing to like complain about it. So I love that aspect of you decided to say, I'm going to be the difference. Ah. And coaching has always been seen as a luxury. Only yes. rich people yes. could afford to hire coaches. Yes. But I'm here to tell you that is not true. Mm -hmm. I am affordable and I am here to help you and everyone else achieve their goals. And you just need that. You need that. I, I had it. You know, um, everybody needs somebody Absolutely. who can be that voice of reason to show you what you're capable of on the days that you can't see it yourself oh don't worry i'll be calling you too soon <laughs> <laughs> i need a little extra <laughs> so um with more for more being a financially focused organization can you tell me or tell our audience um what impacts do you have on your day-to-day -day when it comes to business and personal like how do you balance the two how do you make financial decisions that are best like for at that time for you um, for business and personal okay you're asking about finances in my day-to-day -day yeah. personal business mm -hmm. okay <laughs> That's a really good question because things have changed so drastically in my life when it comes to finances. Mm. Um, for one, for my personal life, um, I feel like I work hard and I deserve to get and purchase the things that I truly want. I believe in celebrating myself, <laughs> okay. rewarding myself, however that looks. Um, so that could be the purchase of something. Um, but I also invest and I feel like, you know, when, when I think about it and I think about my, my day-to-day -day personal finances, I pay tuition for my children. Mm -hmm. You know, they're in a Christian school because I wanted them to have Christian education. That's an investment. You know, that's a lot, a large chunk of money coming out every single month when there's a free public school right next door. Absolutely. You know, so just thinking about it, like, it's all about choices and decisions when it comes to my personal life. I'm not a, um, I've never been a huge frivolous spender. Never really just had to buy things just to have things. But I also have never really been on a, a super tight budget either. You know, it's I, I've just made really good choices. Like I'll say, oh, I really want this. Well, let me see if it's on sale or let me see if it's cheaper somewhere else. Or, you know, it's about the choices with all that we do. Um, I never would want to be restrictive to say, oh, I'm not going to allow myself to, to purchase X, Y, Z, um, but really just making wise decisions. And then for my business, it's sort of the same thing. It's boiled down to what are the most efficient systems that mm -hmm. I can purchase that are not going to be super expensive in a sense of having, you know, I, I look at it like, okay, if I have one client, that client could actually pay for this particular system. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's not really looking at it like the dollar amount, if you will, because money is literally like an exchange of energy. That's truly what it is. So when you do something for someone for free, a lot of you may not get that great quality. I mean, you know, like it's free. So you don't expect 
so much quality from free that you would expect for something that's expensive, right? right? You know, so it's really that exchange of energy. And so that's how I look at it. I'm like, you know, my business needs this um, system to, to manage my clients, like a client management CRM system. Well, how many clients am I going to have to accept that's going to pay for this for the year? Absolutely. Or how, you know, am, am I priced correctly? You know, pricing is always a huge challenge when it comes to any business owner. And I have, you know, the, I would say I've been blessed to be able to negotiate contracts for a large company. So I kind of know how pricing works. I kind of know how the margins works. And so people actually come to me to help them set their pricings for their business. Like there are times where I may look at something and I'm like, oh, they set that way too cheap. Like, do they know like that they can make like triple that amount? You know, so it's like I just my mind just works like that. Um, so it kind of it, it really helps me in my in my personal life and my business because I can I, I know how pricing works. And I um, so I think about it like from that standpoint and not so much a, a budget. If that makes sense. Absolutely. You're helping people truly find what their value is what their worth is it's, they're not just the the price of what they're offering they're the price of the labor that comes with it including tax and it's okay because you're buying me not buying my product or my service so mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this how does our theme of your work every dollar connects to the mental, the physical, the spiritual, financial portion? Even though I know you're only focusing on the mental, but how do you feel that that theme connects to women? Oh my gosh, I love the theme. And I think the theme is so timely and so relevant because as I'm telling people, you deserve everything you've earned so far. You're saying you're worthy of every dollar. It's the exact same thing. It's the exact same concept, right? So when you look at a job, like let's just think about like from a negotiation standpoint, you look at a job and you see what the, what the pay is. Mm -hmm. Well, it's up to you to determine if your skill set matches that pay. And if you add more, if you bring more to the table, then you should be making more than what that what that uh, salary says on that paper. So one way to do that is to look at the market, take that job title and, and look at other places and see what they're paying and really determine if that will be a good fit for you because it's so important on your physical, spiritual, as well as your financial, what we're talking about here today, but if you don't feel like you're being paid what you deserve, you're not going to bring your best self into that space. You're not going to perform the best that you can actually perform because there's some resentment there. But what you can't do is resent how much you make when you didn't try to get more. You know, you have to know what is going to be enough for you based on your bills, what the role is, you know, because you may say you only need 40,000, but ultimately the, for the work that you do, that could be a $60,000 job, mm -hmm. but you didn't even know that you should be making that. So it's really important to do your research. And when I tell you, when you are not being paid properly, and I can speak for, I mean, from personal experience, when you feel that you are not being paid, paid properly, you start resenting your job, your clients, everything, because you don't feel valued. I've been there before. I used to do resumes and I remember charging a little or nothing. And then every time I got a new client, I was like, oh, I don't even want to do this because <laughs> I wasn't charging enough. So when you don't charge enough, it affects all of those things your mental your physical your spiritual and especially your financial because what you don't want to do is put yourself in a position where you are struggling to pay your bills you're struggling to feed your family you don't have discretionary income in case your car breaks down or something like that so just know negotiating is a skill set and, and, and it's hard um but there are people like me that can help with that 
that can help you research jobs and things to show you you are worth way more than what you're making um you know but there are there are times where you can you can get in a place where you're you're comfortable and you're happy and that's and that's fine you know um i remember at one time i was like wow i, I feel like I, I do get paid very well for doing what i'm doing you know because i'm feeling like hey i can get more but i get paid very well for doing what it is that i do because i know other people that do what i do and they don't get paid as well as i do you know so like i said money is exchange of energy you want to know what the market pays for whatever the job is so that you can decide is this the right level for me is this going to be a good fit for me mentally physically spiritually and financially or should i be looking at a higher level job one that i have the skill set for i may not check every single box on the job requisition but i have the skill set to be in a managerial position that's going to compensate me at a, a higher level um so yeah people don't like talking about pay but it's something that i talk about and i'm always like how much you getting paid <laughs> because i can tell them look you have room to negotiate Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm not coming from a place of just wanting to know somebody's business. I'm coming from a place of I want to help you get more money. Or, for instance, my makeup artist, I saw her prices and I'm like, okay, she's a little bit higher than some of these, the norm that I've seen. So when I went and got my makeup done, I told her, I said, you know, I love your pricing. I think your pricing is great for the service you offer. And she's like, really? No one's ever told me that. They told me I was too high. I said, no, ma'am, you are not too high. And I'm coming to you because of your pricing. I want quality. So you have to remember that. You want quality, you're going to have to pay a little bit more for that. Um, but going back to being worth every dollar, they want quality from you. They're going to have to pay you a little bit more for that. You know, um, otherwise you could just be mediocre. You could come in and just meet expectations or are you going to come in and ex exceed or be outstanding? Well, guess what? They can pay you more for that. What have you shown them that you're capable of? What can you do? Um, so that's the way that I look at money. And that's the way that I think of the theme. You know, when I think of the theme, all of these thoughts ran through my mind. You know, it's like, you know, you want everybody to know that they are capable of making more and being you know achieving what they want to achieve if they put in the work for it yes. you have to put in the work for it too you can't just sit there and just accept what's being given you have room to negotiate they always say everything's negotiable it, and it's true um there are some industries that i, I would say are not it, it doesn't ring true for um it's a little different sometimes for teachers and lawyers and you know some industries but overall you need help with that you you call me we could talk absolutely oh my goodness see i i was gonna add you for a little sneak peek of like <laughs> what you're gonna be discussing but i already see that you have dropped nuggets you've already dropped advice and letting our audience know what you're already offering so if that's something definitely they're interested in we're gonna make sure that you know we find a way to get that information to them as well as who you are um but before we get to that point please tell us about your book um owning your own grit or i'm sorry the correction yeah. owning your grit mm -hmm. and that's an acronym tell us about yeah. that i know you're talking about the tenacity and the power of a woman and the resilience um but tell us tell us about that yeah so the book is an anthology of 40 women's stories mm -hmm. and i was invited to be a part of it um so i have one chapter in the book um, along with 39 other women um, the title owning your grit grit stands for growth resilience intentionality and tenacity and so for my chapter i really focus on the i being intentional and you could probably tell by the way i'm telling you all about things that i do today how intentional i am about the choices i make and the things that i do um, and so i share a story very very personal story so if you want to get to know me a little bit more um, definitely read my chapter but it's very personal about the decisions that i made and, and choosing my husband and, and and choosing our life the life that we have um and moving to st louis from kansas city so it really dives deeper into my life 
And my hope is that it will be inspiring to someone. Yeah, to just be, you know, intentional and the power and intentionality and manifesting the things that you want in your life. Um, so that's that's what it's about. You can find it. Um, I have a link directly to support me because if you buy the book on Amazon, I don't get credit for that um, because I wasn't the, the named author of mm -hmm. the book. But if you buy it directly from me, then I get credit for that. Um, and so that is, you can visit bit.ly backslash author Char, and it'll take you directly to how you can purchase it from me. Perfect. Well, if you actually can give us or our audience, um, all of your social media platforms, your website, and we'll make sure that we put the link in, um, right below so that <laughs> they'll be able to find you. Um, and we'll try to make sure we post it, but let us know how we can find you. Awesome. Yeah, I think I'm the most active on Instagram. Um, so you can find me at Char C Smith 2 um, and EYC Char C Smith. That's the business page for Empower You Consulting and then my name. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn, Char C Smith. Um, I have a website where you can see some of the services that I offer, and that is charcsmith.com. And you can email me at char at empoweryouconsulting.com. Um, and again, find the book at bit.ly backslash author char. If you have any issues at all purchasing the book from there, shoot me an email, shoot me a DM, drop me a message, and I will get it to you. Um, I, I'm not one of those people where it has to be some fancy process. You can cash at me. I can meet you somewhere, deliver the book to you. I can mail it to you. So I will get you the book if you Absolutely. want. It. Absolutely. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys, this conference is going to be amazing. Before you even get to the conference, make sure you look up Ms. Char C. Smith. Because when I tell you, it's going to be amazing. And to be able to get the nuggets that you need she, in St. Louis, she, she can find you. Okay. So don't be afraid to meet up with her. But until then, get your ticket, bring your notebook, bring your pen. Because when I say the nuggets that she's dropping are going to be so influential, so empowering, so knowledgeable. Oh gosh. We're going to definitely put her information below for you guys. We have loved every moment of this. Um, thank you so much for coming to share your story, a little bit about you, so that our audience and our savers have the opportunity to get to know you before you show your beautiful smile and um, just <laughs> drop that knowledge on us. So thank you so thank much, Miss Smith. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>